是 Yuki， 我在温哥华。我现在在美国佐治亚大学念书。美国，呃 s i r c u s 学生大学就读。这里是澳大利亚悉尼大学。这是我现在的学校，在加拿大萨省里贾纳大学。我呢，就读于爱荷华大学。就读于美国的 UIUC。专业是 Media Studies。我叫李亚东，现在是 Bucknell University 的一名大三的学生。我是啊，李静怡，我现在在欧柏林文理学院读大二。我现在在 University of New Hampshire。我现在正在美国西雅图华盛顿大学攻读电子工程专业。我是刘梦博。我现在在美国雪城大学上大三。我现在是在 Miami University。我是在 UCI 上学的 Melody。现在我在西雅图上学呢。现在在加州大学戴维斯分校读大三。嗯、呃，我能够考上这所大学，也完全是托许亚亚老师的福了。能够从。美丽的中国大陆漂洋过海到大洋彼岸来开眼看世界，我们的徐女神必然是功不可没。对，我觉得很开心能遇到你，也很庆幸遇到你这么优秀的老师。徐亚老师是我在 S A T 辅导班中培训我写作的一位老师，我的 S A T 写作分也是我单项分中最高的一项。我特别感谢你对我在 S A T 方面的帮助，因为你给我扩充了特别多的知识。一个老师教的好，却长得不好，那他就是一屌丝；如果一个老师教的好，长得也好，那他就是女神了。肤白貌美，气质佳，能文能武，口才好。雪松老师因为是美女老师，且教的很好，所以大家都很喜欢听他上课。雪松老师是新东方为数不多的几个美女老师之一。人又美，然后教的又好，就觉得这老师非常的靠谱。我觉得你真的讲课讲得非常的好，呃，让人很愿意去听，愿意去学。你说你长得这么女神，还这么 knowledgeable， 你想让我嫉妒什么？嗯、呃，许亚亚老师讲课呢，特别通俗易懂，很有自己的风格，然后很能让学生去理解，呃，很容易就能把英语学好吧，算是非常。有自己的个性和自己的一个教学特色的一个老师，没有那种老师他那种很压抑或者在就是在传授什么那种感高人一等的感觉，跟他在一起就是很放松很开心，就像聊天一样，但学到了很多，超级超级好的老师跟朋友。从天文地理到海洋生物，你真是无所不知、无所不晓。嗯，你可以和他从胡辣汤聊到鸡尾酒，可以和他从嗯尾田荣一郎聊到高低，还可以和他一起吐槽各国文化。嗯，总之就是上课学不完，下课聊不完。上得了厅堂，下得了厨房。美食的活地图。呃，对世界各地的美食如数家珍。人送外号“江湖厨神”的完美英语老师是居家旅行必备良药，非常具有冒险精神。呃，在经常给我们讲述他在旅游过程中遇到的一些呃好玩的人和事儿。去了。巴西好像啊，去了韩国，还有很多地方，我真的挺羡慕的。我觉得一个人，呃，能不为外事所动，然后，呃的去独立的生活，这是人很大的优点。我也想像老师一样，就是他有一颗童心，而且是对什么这东西都非常非常的有热情。在新的一岁里，越来越漂亮，然后天天开心，生日快乐，永远两岁，继续女神哦。
。祝徐老师生日快乐，在每一个生活天天开心。生日快乐，永远漂亮，永远年轻。女神亚亚老师生日快乐，徐亚亚生日快乐。Happy birthday！ 早上柜子，祝你和老公恩爱。生活越来越美满，长得越来越漂亮。祝福你每天开心快乐，永远幸福下去。生日快乐哦！邱女神生日快乐。
Hello， 大家好，非常大，非常高兴，欢迎大家参加我们的公开课讲座。那么今天的讲座呢，我们是邀请许聪老师、许佳雅老师啊、呃，讲授 ICT 语法，也就是 grammar 的部分。那么今天是一个特殊的日子啊，因为今天是许聪老师的生日，所以说在此之前的话，我们先播放一个来自于学生给他做的一个视频。我在温哥华。我现在在美国佐治亚大学念书。美国，呃 s i r c u s 学生大学就读。这里是澳大利亚悉尼大学。这是我现在的学校，在加拿大萨省里贾纳大学。我呢，就读于爱荷华大学。就读于美国的 UIUC， 专业是伊利亚斯马斯达我叫李亚东，现在是 b u c k n e l l University 的一名大三的学生。我是啊，李静怡，我现在在。我现在在 University of New Hampshire。我现在正在美国西雅图华盛顿大学攻读电子工程专业。我是刘梦博，我现在在美国雪城大学上大三。我现在是在 Miami University。我是在 UCI 上学的 Melody。现在我在西雅图上学呢。现在在加州大学戴维斯分校读大三。呃我能够考上这所大学，也完全是托许亚雅老师的福了。我从美丽的中国大陆漂洋过海到大洋彼岸来开眼看世界，我们的许女神必然是功不可没。所以我觉得很开心能遇到你，也很庆幸遇到你这么优秀的老师。许亚雅老师是我在 S A T 辅导班中培训我写作的一位老师，我的 S A T 写作分也是我单项分中最高的一项。我特别感谢你对我。C A T 方面的帮助，因为你给我扩充了特别多的知识。如果一个老师教的好，却长得不好，那他就是一屌丝；如果一个老师教的好，长得也好，那他就是你啦。肤白貌美，气质佳，能文能武。口才好，许聪老师因为是美女老师，姐教的很好，所以大家都很喜欢听他上课。许聪老师是新东方为数不多的几个美女老师之一，人又美，然后教的又好，就觉得这老师非常的靠谱。我觉得你真的讲课讲的非常的好，呃，让人很愿意去听，愿意去学。你说你长得这么女神，还这么 knowledgeable， 你想让我嫉妒什么？嗯，许亚亚老师讲课呢，特别通俗易懂，很有自己的风格，很能让学生去理解，呃，很容易就能把英语学好吧，算是非常有自己的个性和自己的一个教学特色的一个老师。没有那种老师，他那种很压抑，或者在就是在传授什么那种感高人一等，感觉他在一起就是很放松、很开心，就像聊天一样。他学到了很多，超级超级好的老师跟朋友。从天文地理到海洋生物，你真是无所不知、无所不晓。嗯，你可以和他从胡辣汤聊到鸡尾酒，可以和他从。为田荣一郎聊到高低，还可以和他一起吐槽各国文化。嗯，总之就是上课学不完，下课聊不完。上得了厅堂，下得了厨房。美食的活地图。OK， 好。呃、uh, ，so 我就是 share 一下这个学生发来的这个部分，因为许聪老师也在看，希望会对他是一个呃、uh, surprise happy birthday anyway。OK， 好，那么接下来呢，我们就有请许聪老师来给我们进入到今天的讲座内容。那我们的今天内容是关于 SAT 的语法的。OK， so 呃、uh, ，Robin and、uh, I can、uh, pass my post to you and you can share your、okay. yeah you can share your screen now. Okay, gotcha. Okay.
。OK， 啊、um, ，大家晚上好。那么。非常高兴能有这样的机会，能跟大家在一起去分享在语法学习上的一些心得。那么刚才在视频里面，我的学生叫我许亚亚，其实我的大名叫许聪，然后学生的一般叫我亚亚老师，然后我的英文名字叫 Robin， 所以哪一个名字都是是我。因为有一个家长以前特别可爱，他说我们找的是许许聪老师上课，怎么是许亚亚老师？其实都是我。OK， 好，那我们今天就言归正传。鉴于今天我们会有一些就是美国本土的孩子，所以我今天的讲座会是以中英文结合的方式来向大家去讲解。那么今天我们就来讲一下这个 basic grammar。OK， 所、so、以在我之前的教学经历当中，有很多学生问过我这样的问题，说徐老师应该怎么去提高我的英语，应该怎么去提高我的这个阅读啊、写作呀等等这样的水平。我知道语法很重要，但是语法真的很无聊。So during my Previous experience, I've been told so many times about my students. They ask me the same question: How to improve my English ability, especially like reading comprehension and writing skills? I know grammar、um, is important, but seriously, it's boring. Okay, yes, I know, but does it matter? Yes, unfortunately, it matters, and it matters a lot. Why? Okay, let's get into more details. So, grammar, why is it important for us? Why is it so important for us? 今天我们就从以下这三个方面来向大家讲解。第一个方面是语法对于我们日常应用当中，也就是我们实际的 pragmatic purpose 当中，它会有一些什么样的作用。那么第二个方面就是从它的一个语用信息，也就是从我们的语言本身的一个学术性角度来去讨论一下。第三个当然就是跟我们一些考试相关的，比如说 ACT、SAT 之类，它对我们的考试会有什么样的影响 ？OK， 那比如说对于使用上来讲，嗯。很多像是中国过来的学生，那么他可能是从九年级开始进入美国的高中，那么他觉得是自己在国内已经有过相关的语法的学习，但是这样的语法知识实际上是并不扎实的，也就是他只是得到了最浅显的语法的构架。那么对于简单句来讲是没有问题，但是如果一旦上升到阅读里面的复杂句型，以及在写作里面你需要去构建一些比较长的句型。那么对于这种学生，可能来说就是一些比较难的点。那么我在实际的教学过程当中，也遇到很多从国内过来的孩子。那么他有一定的语法基础，但是他的语法基础就是像筛子一样，会有很多中间所出现的漏洞。一旦我们的考试题它是不定向的，如果一旦这些考试题跟他这个漏洞相吻合，那么这些孩子就束手无策。所以对于这样的孩子，我可以给大家举一个例子，看看你有没有在日常生活中犯到这样的问题。比如说我有一个学生非常可爱，我让他去写一篇作文。那么这个作文呢，他写了四段，这个语法会对他的一个作文思路有什么样的限制呢？他第一段写的开头叫做 I think， OK， 第二段呢叫 I also think， 在他的 paragraph three， 他写的是 I finally think。其实当时看到这个的时候，我的心就已经凉了一半，因为我觉得他一直在用这个词的 overwhelming repetition of the word think， OK， 在第四段。他第一句话并没有出现 think， 我刚刚准觉得自己应该舒了一口气，结果在他最后一句，他出现了一句 Do you think so？ 我当时心就已经完全凉了，因为由于他的一个语法限制 ，due to the limitation of his grammar， that's the only word he can use。OK， 那么如果他要有一定的语法构架，他就知道 think 这个词，那实际上它是可以转换成，比如说一些副词连接词 ，adverb， 呃 ，adverb conjunction， like personally。OK， 如果更高级一点 ，for intermediate level， he can switch that word into into what into， 呃、uh, ，for example， from my perspective， 就是一个这这个相当于我们 phrase 程度上可以去替换掉 think。如果更高级一些，我们甚至可以用名词型的从句 ，what I'm trying to point out， 这样的句型也来去替换掉 think。那么，所以大家可以看出来，对于这样的孩子，这样的一个构架语法，对于来说毫无疑问是相当重要的。那么，对于我们这些就是有一些我们 local 本土的学生，像 English native speaker， to those who are struggling with grammar， okay， does grammar really matter？ I'll give you example. For example， I've been recently， uh， I've been reading kind of science fiction novels recently， and every time I try to explain my dreams to my friend， I might my star will go like me and alien went to an awesome party held by Stephen Hawking。Sounds amazing, right? But what just、um, depressed me was that my friend suddenly stopped me, and she was like, "Hold on, okay, it's not me and alien; it's the alien and I." 
okay, why should you put a alien I? Because this sentence just mix, mix up with the function of subject form and object form. Because here, what we need actually is subject form, which is I instead of me, that is the object form of the pronoun. So in this sentence, you can see that 正常情况下，我们都习惯性的一些用语，那么其实是错误的。正确正确的格式应该是 the alien and I. And the reason why we should put yes the name precede ours is because of some politeness, some courtesy issue. And, okay, and let's just take a second example. If I was you, I would definitely try that. We all know that everybody here we like take um make hypothesis, take some assumptions by using subjunctive mood. But is that correct? Actually, it is not. If I was you, the only be verb happened in subjunctive mood should be were. So the correct form should go like, if I were you, I would do. So, okay, uh, you probably ask, all right, Robin, it's fine because people can totally understand what I'm talking about by saying that. Those minor mistakes can be ignored. Okay, really? If you want people to take you seriously. You will not show more authority of yourself, okay? If you want to say it, just say it correctly. That's the importance of grammar. That's also the beauty of grammar. So try to think about: Have you ever made such mistakes? Have you ever said this? 好，那么对于语法，刚才我们看，不管是对于这种母语为英语还是非英语的孩子来讲，其实对于他们来讲，语法这些对于本身自己的语言准确性都是有一定影响的。那么，其实语法一些稍稍的改变，在我们的实际应用当中，还可以有什么样的影响呢？我们可以看一下这样的一个例子。那么，大家刚来美国的时候，我们都喜欢走入美国的星巴克。进入星巴克，我们点一杯咖啡，可以这样去说 ：“I want a cappuccino. That's fine. I want americano. Whatever you want. That's fine.” 但是 ，what if you want to change into you? You go to upscale venue. 你去一个更高级的饭店，比如说一个法国餐厅，一个意大利餐厅。那么，如果你要这样去说 ，probably the server will not take you seriously. 因为他会觉得你不入行。为什么呢？因为这样的表达方式是我们习惯性用的，叫 narrative statement。但是，正常如果我们想向别人去表达我们自己的请求，一个稍微的语法变化就会带来效果的不同。OK， 我们可以看到。Could I have a cappuccino? Is a very small verb change. This is called a modal verb that can make a difference because which can carry more、um, sense of courtesy. It will give you people that you are a polite person. Okay, so we can see I want a cappuccino. This way, can be changed. Could I have? Modal verb, that is, it can make a difference in the real use. It can give you a slight difference. For example. 那么经常我会向学生去布置一些 S C T 的任务，我可以向他们去 send request， 我可以这样去讲 ，You need to work on S A T today。但是这样的方式显得过于强硬 ，too affirmative。那么如果你想跟别人，就是这样的方式，我们更加的一个 attachable、reachable 的方式，我们应该怎么去说呢？大家可以看一下一个时态的简单的转换。那么这个时态就是什么的 ？Progress future progressive tense， 就是我们的将来进行时。我们都认识将来进行时，但实际上它在我们的日常应用当中，一个将来进行时的转换可以表达你的语气更为的婉转。所以大家可以看到，在实际应用当中，我们的语法一个稍微的转换点，给你带来不同的感受。这就是我们这个 in terms of the gram 呃、uh, grammar in our daily life in the practical use. So it reminds me of my one of my favorite movies, Forrest Gump. 我非常喜欢的一个电影叫《阿甘正传》，当中我记得一个非常深刻的台词，就是别人问阿甘 ，So what kind of person you would like to be？ 那么阿三阿甘很自然的说 ，I just want to be myself. Okay, so obviously a person should not be judged by what he looks like, but there could be a chance that he might be judged by how his grammar sounds like. Okay, seriously. 好，那么接下来刚才我们看到是在实际应用当中语法对于我们带来的影响。我们接下来看一下学术领域当中 ，academic 跟我们日常学习的过程当中，语法会对我们有什么样的影响 ？Let's take this word as example. It's a simple word, more. I'm pretty sure that everybody has pretty get familiarized with this word, more. Okay, nothing else. But do you exactly know the function or part of the speech of the word more in each sentence? 我们现在可以来做这样的一个练习，大家可以看一看。这个单词你是否知道，在以下三句话当中，它所处于的词性有什么样的不同 
like I said, if you want to use it, just use it correctly. 比如说，我们看第一句话 ，We had more than they did. So actually, more works as an object after the verb had, which makes it a pronoun or a noun. Because we know noun and pronouns they can work as either subject or project.、Uh, I'm sorry, either subject or object. 好，接下来我们来看第二句 ，We had more food than they did. Okay, a little bit difference here because more is actually to describe food, which makes more as an adjective. Right, adjective in sentence two. What about sentence three? We talked more than they did. Okay. Still, the the function of more here is to modify a word, but the word is not a noun but a verb, which is talk. And so, in this case, more is actually an adverb. Adverb. Okay. So we can see that. 这个词非常简单，但是在不同的句子当中，它的词性是不一样的。这就是我们讲究语法的精准性。那么还有很多同学会说 ，to those who are struggling with reading comprehensions, that their problem would be like, I know exactly each word in this paragraph, but there's no way that I I I can understand them if you combine them into a paragraph. Okay, let's take this one example. 我们来看一下这样两句话，看看我们阅读跟语法之间的关系。Okay, I'll give you ten seconds to take a look at the, those sentences. All right, it's pretty easy because the only difference between those two is very subtle. It's a subtle difference about a tiny punctuation, which is comma. 那么在这句话当中，唯一的区别就是我们在于一个逗号的区别。那么它跟阅读会有什么样的关系 ？Okay. Let's take a look at first the sentence. So in the first sentence, the law is extended to other non-racial forms of discrimination. So the function of a of comma is actually like taking a pause, which means the entire sentence could be split into two different sections. Okay, and the logical arrangement for sentence one is like the previous contents is focusing on racial forms of discrimination. Well, the others, the rest part of the paragraph, going to be extended to non-racial forms. So the logic is like racial and non-racial forms. How the laws could be applied into different fields. Well, for the second sentence, the law extended to other non-racial forms of discrimination, without a comma, which means they can be combined together. They have similarities. Okay. Oh, so the logical arrangement for this sentence is like. The previous contents also was focusing on non-racial forms. The only difference that could be non-racial form one and the extended idea of following paragraphs could be like non-racial form two. So that's the difference. See the difference? Only a tiny comma that can brings a lot of that can bring a lot of difference. Okay, if this one is not convincing enough, let's take a look at this one. So still the same sentence, just with a different comma. So grammatically, we call the first sentence as essential clause. Essential clause. The clause is like who works in the army, like essential clause, which is one of the attributive and also adjective clause. Well, for the second one, we call non-essential clause. And apparently, from this meaning, we are pretty aware of that the first clause, which is essential, necessary. If you take out from the the clause from the entire sentence, there's no way for the entire sentence can stand alone because it will probably bring some misleading information to the readers. While for the second one, which is not essential and also optional, like if you take out, take, if you want to、um, cross out a sentence, the clause from the entire paragraph or if, to the previous content, it can still make sense without any misunderstanding. Why? Okay, the question is. Why? Because for the first sentence, you need to figure out that the man probably he has more than two sons. Okay, at least the two, because you need that extra information to differentiate this son from others. And so, without that information, there's no way for us to understand who you're actually talking about. Well, for the second sentence, the man has. A, I'm sorry, Mr. Tipple has a son, has a son. 
I'm sorry, there should be um, a has right here. A man has a son who works in the army because this is not essential, which means the man only has one son. Without that information, still know who you are talking about. Just see, still a tiny comma can bring a lot of difference. That's the beauty of grammar. Okay. 好的，这是刚才我们看到啊，跟阅读相关的语法对于我们阅读当中会有什么样的影响？其实这两道题是非常典型的。很多人会学的，我学阅读，那我就学阅读好了，我干嘛要去学语法呢？实际上，就是你每一个词都了解的情况之下，当你合成一个句子，或者是在整个篇章里面去看的时候，你会结合你的语法点的应用，去理解更深刻你的上下文之间的关联，对你的阅读理解当然是有很大的帮助。那么对于写作呢？很多同学很挣扎在写作上面。I have no idea what to say and how to say and about my essay. Okay, essay really is a suffer. 好，那我们给大家来看这样的一个例子。那么接下来这个例子呢，这是几个句子，是我从著名的小说《简爱》当中所摘抄出来的。Okay, I took those several sentences from the very famous novel *Jane Eyre*, written by Charlotte Bronte. And okay, let's just go through very quickly. God has gifted me with some beauty and much wealth. I should have made it as hard for you to leave me as it is now for me to leave you. I'm not talking to you now through the medium, custom, conventionalities, nor even a mortal flesh. It's my spirit that addresses your spirit, just as if both had passed through the grave and we stood at God's feet, equal as we are. So obviously, we can see the depth use of Charlotte Bronte. She has, she is.、Um, I have to say, she's the master of grammar. Her depth use of interactively sophisticated grammar gives us a strong feeling of、uh, Jane Eyre, his great emotion and his infatuation for Rochester. So this is the beauty of grammar. See how it can help you on your essay, and how, like, including for for example, in this. Um, passage, we can see the combination of subjunctive mood. Like, if God had gifted me, I should have made it. It's subjunctive mood, and like parallelism and emphatic sentences. Like, it is my spirit that addresses your spirit. It's called emphatic sentence, as well as the delicacy of punctuation. Okay, the accurate use of punctuation. So those combination, the depth use of her grammar gives us strong feeling that will help your readers on the same page. They can totally understand what you are talking about and feel your emotions.、So、that's the beauty of grammar to our writing. Okay, so just like I said,、um, I'll give you an example like how grammar can matter、uh, can matter other other use in our English. For example, we probably if you learn you have learned some. Economic terms will probably get familiar get familiarized with the term Maslow's hierarchy. 大家如果学经济学，就应该知道经济学里面有一个理论叫做马斯洛效应。那么在这个里面，最底层 the basic layer of the pyramid is called physiological needs. 就是我们说的生理需求 which means like water, your food that you need to keep your life. Okay, so grammar actually plays、um, the exact the identical role as the physiological needs. Without that, there's no way that you can extend your English ability to other fields. Like no way you can have you can gain your self actualization. Okay, so this is what we're talking about. Grammar, very, very important. Okay. 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 它到底有什么样的重要性？我们可以来看一下，在 I C T 考试当中，语法起到的一个作用。那么这个大家可以简单的看一下，简单看一下，不需要特别仔细，因为这个是我从2017年1月份亚太考区的这个一套题当中摘抄出来的，整理的语法，我们一共四篇文章， 4 4道题所进行的考察点。我们一看到右侧这两个 column 当中有两块考察点。一块考察点是语法，一块是逻辑。这就是我们整个 ICT 的考察题目当中分成了两种类型，一种叫做语法题，一种叫做逻辑型的题。我们看这两种类型的比较当中，很显然，语法题考察的是更多，占的比例是更大的，因为包括我们名词、代词、形容词这些基本的使用。包括各种名词性从句、状语从句，就包括这个形容词性从句的使用，包括标点符号以及你的 sentence and、uh, fragments， 你的句子的完整性等等。
，所以这些是在你整个的 I C T 考试当中占到一个绝对的这个这个优，就比较占有优势性地位的一些。为让大家更清楚的去了解语法对我们整个考试的影响，我给大家看一个这样的图。那么在这个图当中 ，OK， we know that、um, there are actually two different types of questions in our SAT test. One is called usage and mechanics, which is more relevant with our basic grammar, and the other is called、uh, rhetorical skills. What is rhetorical skills like?、Um, how the author want to use his evidence to to illustrate his idea? This is called rhetorical skills, more like logical arrangement, which includes strategy, organization, and writing style. Okay, so obviously we can see from this chart, from this、uh, graph, that our basic grammar is weighted more than the strategy, than the logical arrangement. So many students, at the beginning, when they learn SAT, will have this misconception: I have to do the logical arrangement, logical arrangement, logical arrangement is most important. In fact, you missed a very basic question that you can get marks. These questions are your basic grammar. Its usage and mechanics. You know, these places' questions are very predictable. You have a basic grammar. Okay, whether you have a like a systematic grammar background, um, it will it will matter a lot. Okay, so this is the basic grammar. 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 Okay, so this is the basic 我们接下来还给大家准备了，我还给大家准备了两道小的 S A T 的一个真题练习。我们来看一下语法对于我们 S A T 题目的一个影响，看看到底基础语法会有多么大的一个影响。我给大家三十秒的时间，可以看一下这两道题。Give you thirty seconds. Okay, so have you got your answers? All right. For the first question, the correct answer should be C. Should be C. Okay. Let me explain to you. For the first one, A is out because there you cannot use a comma between two complete sentences. Otherwise, it's going to call a run-on sentence. We should definitely avoid run-on sentence in our essay. Okay. 两个一个逗号是不能连接两个完整句子的，否则这种句型就叫 run on sentence， 是一个非常严重的语法错误。那么对于这个剩下两个答案 ，OK， let's see， let's take a look B and D. So grammatically, B and D both of them are right, but、uh, there's no need for us to take like complicated sentence structures by B arenas, and they are. Or、uh, it doesn't make sense if we use semicolon in between to split all the,、uh, the sentence into two. So, for the B answer, this is a wordiness. It is not necessary to use this kind of grammatical structure. For example, wordiness is also an important part of our grammar. I will give you an example. What is wordiness? Okay, wordiness gives you redundancy. Those are common mistakes common,、um, that will be tested in your SAT. What is redundancy? Redundancy like the overwhelming repetition of one single word, which will、um, absolutely make a reader feel boring and monotonous of that. 就像刚才我举的 think 的例子，你比如说 ，for example, I would say, Lily, she's a pretty, cute, and gorgeous girl. This is called redundancy because all the three words they all carry the same idea. You don't need to use all them. Just Cross the other two and keep one. That'll be fine. She's a gorgeous girl, and that's the correct way. What is wordiness? Wordiness is like using some unnecessary sentence structures to express a simple idea. For example, Lily is a beautiful girl, and the function for beautiful is adjective. Adjective is supposed to modify a noun. That's the mission of adjective. So there's no need for you to use Lily is a girl who is beautiful. So if you use that kind of sentence structure, it's called wordiness. Wordiness. Same thing here. 那在这个句子当中是一样的情况。我们为什么不选 B 答案？就是因为它是一个 wordiness 的句子。那么选最后选 C 的原因是什么呢 ？So we talk column as a as a explanation. So we are taking column's explanation and GMO actually the explanation of the previous content. And for number two, the correct answer should be D. Should be D. And why is that? 
because we can read a sentence real quick. In this type of GMO, the end use has not itself been altered, only the process. So by far, only the process. So by far from that, that could be a complete sentence. That is a complete sentence. So which uh, makes by which those clause, those section as an adjective clause. Since it's adjective, adjective clause, and if you know, we use preposition then plus which and equals an relative adverb, relative adverb in, the, uh, in our adjective class. And after relative adverb, that should be attached with a complete sentence, which means eight should be work as the subject in the following part, and is and produce. Okay, not only it's complete, but it's also a passive voice, passive voice, okay. So see, that's the, still, like I said, it's the beauty of grammar how it will affect our SAT, affect our um, practical use and our academic use. All right. Okay, so in order to help, um, be, uh, to help you guys have a better understanding to build up a systematic grammar background, we offer some lessons. The lessons will, our course will cover the nine basic and which is essential points in our, in our grammar and including Pronouns, subject verb agreement, adjective clause, that's like the e easier part, non clause, adverb clause, inversion, intermediate level part, and tense, sentence structure, and subjective mood. This is called um, advanced level. So if you are involved with all the practice uh, covering those nine subjects, I think you will probably, it will not only help you to build up a systematic grammar background, but also will help you to. Uh, more skills in your reading as well as your writing because subjunctive mood and sentence structure that will help you a lot in your writing and composing your essay. All right. So last but not least, I want to share um, with a sentence by Stephen King. Okay. So grammar is the pole you grab to get your thoughts up on their feet and walking, which means grammar uh, can work as a bridge connecting with your abstract thoughts, with like your concrete ideas, concrete expressions. 还是我跟大家讲的那句话：如果你心里想的再多，但是如果表达不出来的话，很多程度上是由你语法跟你词汇的限制。所以，语法对于我们整个听说读写，对于我们整个语言英文系统的构架，都是有非常大的一个帮助的。好，那么我今天啊、呃、给大家带来的公开课的部分就是到这些。所以，这个嗯，接下来就可以让大家来进行一些提问。OK， so， 我现在就把这个交给交给春，交给，好的，感谢感谢呃许聪聪老师啊 ，Robin， can thank you so much， you have three names， 许聪、许亚亚、Robin， can say <笑> <Yeah> . get it， <笑> OK， Happy birthday by the way， OK， before we <笑> going back to， thank you， <笑> thank you so much， to the Q&A section， OK， 啊<笑>、呃，现在可以提一下问啊，对于这个 grammar 部分去提一下问，同时呢，其实。呃，你可以到你的 chat box 里面提问，或者是留言到 WeChat 上，我们来进行统一解答。呃，如果你不 feel comfortable public 提问，你可以私信给我们，来我们来进行解答。呃，在此呢，我也特别提，就是特别赞同这个徐松老师的一个观点，就是 grammar is very important。因为这两天我们一直正在 edit 这个 final 的这个 college application essay， 我看到很多学生的 story 都非常好，但是 the way they tell story make me feel like it's it's kind of like you know。Boring, not really attractive. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I actually, in when we were editing that essay, is yeah. Not only the story we are trying to make to be better, but also a lot of time we have to spend on like how to make this you know sentence, how to structure the sentence to be more attractive, and how to make the you know the storytelling is like、um, more smoothly, and how to、uh, make、uh, you know the 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 essay to stand out. You know, this is actually, I think, all in. 啊、uh, ，grammar 就是就是在 grammar， 其实 grammar 不是仅仅是语法或者词法，更多是一种句型表达，一种句法。呃，因为我们在上课的时候，我们经常会讨论去教研，我们发现有些学生问我们的问题就是在于，哎，为什么 A 和 B 不对？那其实只差了一点点，那其实这个也 make sense 啊，其实这个也 sounds right 呀、啊，其实 sounds right is not right at all。那那对于 SAT 和 ACT 来讲的话，其实语法的部分，我们认为这个不光是应试啊，就是你的 test 的 requirement， 也是你的 future 的这个 requirement。但你将来不管是你到 college 写 essay， 还是你到这个将来的这个工作中，这个我相信大家有的时候在这个用词的时候，都其实会有一些不顺的地方。比如有一次，我的一个学生家长问我，他老师，你说 0.3 到底是应该是 is 还是 are 呢？
那个是单数复数呢？还有家长会问我说：“老师，我也问你一个问题，你说 none of the students 那是单数还是复数呢？”呃，还有一些学生会问我一些类似的问题。那这个时候我就会发现到，其实。啊、uh, ，你说这个 second language learner 他们的语法是需要学的，但是我会发现 native speaker 的这个语法更是需要 improve 一下。I have no idea. Most of the question asked from the English speaker, ah,、uh, which is quite interesting. And、uh, we're talking about like the whole way. <笑>然后比如说定语从句，这个 non English non English speaker 都其实讲的非常的懂，都都知道怎么用那个 which 啊 who 啊 what that。但是这个 native speaker 经常会说。Why is that? This is a not sentence. Which this is attributive clause. Have you heard about that? No, I never. Okay. So we have to start from uh from beginning, and then to try to tell everything. This is actually just a problem. 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 啊，说的有点多。那么我们看一下，有同学在问我们的问题了啊。首先，第一个问题是 ，How do you choose between using a dash or colon? Okay, 这个你来回答，我来回答。Okay, yeah, Robin, go ahead. Uh, uh, actually, how the difference between dash and colon? Um, it's pretty subtle. It's pretty subtle. And a dash, they all can play as a um as a taking a pause and taking ex ex explanation of the following part. But the only difference is that normally, uh, we use like kind of For, for、uh, we kind of use a we don't use a complete sentence after if you take out the following part from a dash, which will not make sense. But if you take out I'm sorry from a dash, which will also make sense of the entire sentence. But if we take the extra part from a colon, the entire sentence will probably bring some misunderstanding to the previous meaning. Okay, yeah, that that'll be it. Okay. Thank you so much. And the other one said, "Will you speak English only in your future class?" Yes, of course. Everybody speak English、yeah. in the class because all the class、yeah. is in English. Yeah. Yes. But it just like、uh, due to some of the parents and also some people from outside the U.S. and they need to listen to the、uh, the open class. So sometimes we try to combine together. Uh, yeah, about the dash and the colon. I also want to share a story, because most of my students they try to you know like、uh, tell the difference, and most of them they think there's no difference. Okay, so I remember one of the question, and one of my students argue with me in the class.、Uh, they say, "Hey, you should use the dash.、Uh, you cannot use the colon." Or somebody they argue like, "Oh, you have to use the colon. What's different? There's no difference." I would say most of the time there's no difference because if you want to emphasize a difference, usually that's you want to emphasize something, but call it they won't, you know.、Yeah. But <laughs> when they give you the answer choices like that, you really have to make the choice between the two, you know. All right, one more question. One more question. How do you determine where to place a sentence in a in a paragraph? How do you determine、uh, where to place a sentence in a paragraph? Oh, this is actually a SAT technical question. So、yeah. the placement of the sentence order. Okay, so、um, I'll make it short as soon as、uh, I make it shorter as much as possible. Because the first step, you need to find the keywords in your in your your engine line sentence, and then to find the connections and relevance、uh, relationship and check with each、um, sentence in your paragraph and try to find the connections. Which word is Like the identical word or some synonymous word with the underlying keywords, and then you can find、uh, they're relevant. So the final steps to check、uh, you want to put this sentence before or after it depends on the meaning. On the meaning, normally we will take the noun, the exact specific noun. That noun will go first, and after that you can you you can find some clues about pronouns. So this is my answer about the sentence placement. But this is really you know long story to tell. There's No way that I can finish my answer within one one or two sentences. If you want to know more about that detail, I suggest we'll take our courses, and you will definitely learn more specific strategies dealing with that sentence orders. All right, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, for that part, I also feel like、uh, yeah, I agree with you. Most students they they read everything. They just、uh, put the sound right into the place, and you know sometimes it's what the tricky thing is like. They read everything. They feel like every they they get, sometimes they feel like two or three places you can just put a sentence. If you only focus、yeah. down, of course, there's no logic analysis, right? You need to analyze the logic. All right. So, okay. So one more question. Most schools in U.S. do not teach grammar. How can students educated here still be good at writing or reading, which involves grammar skill? All right. So yeah, I totally agree with you. Most schools in the U.S. they don't teach grammar. <laughs>、right. Yeah, I agree with you. 
How can student advocate here still be good at writing or reading, which involve in the grammar skills? I think this is not a question. This is kind of like try to complain a little bit, right? I agree. Right. That's why you have to find somebody to help you for the essay. Um, you know, some student when they came to us for the qualification, and I told them you can just do it by yourself because the the kids yeah. is not very good at the writing and essay and the grammar. They don't actually need to help in the last minutes, right? But a student who yeah. are not really good at writing and the reading because of the you know like of the grammar skills, they really uh, well it, it, it's long term effect. You will see in in the long term run. Yeah. Okay, I can just give um give this student an example of the comparison by using different grammars because normally I saw this some essay from my uh, my student. He uh, her essay will go like. Uh, this activity, like, like her volunteer activities, is super cool. It's super cool. Is that in, in her personal statements? I was shocked because this act is super cool. It's definitely is informal language, and she put that for informal language in her personal statements. So, what what's the difference between super cool and if, what if I say this actively plays an indispensable role in my like career aspiration? If you change that into a superior sentence, like by using superior grammar, that will make a huge difference. And that's what I can tell you to pay more attention to the meticulousness of a grammar usage. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we can ask like the, the two more questions. Okay. okay. So one more question is asked. Okay. So it's a private question. So the student asked me, okay. I have been here since I was grade nine, and now I'm uh, grade 11. Is there any chance to fix my grammar in the last minute? Okay, so do you want to answer this question, Robin? Thank you. Uh, you can go ahead. Yeah, I, so, okay. Yeah, I think that's, that, that definitely that will help you because you're in um, grade 11. Like I said, it's never too late to learn to start your grammar. And we will cover the, the essential points in our um in our grammar system so that i think that will be very helpful for you yeah and the problem that you need more practice than other students if they they are in grade a or grade nine i think you need more practice yeah yeah i totally agree and like what we said in a previous open class we do recommend the students and the parents to move their timeline ahead which is like starting to prepare uh, the SAT or ACT or grammar or reading or writing skills, like those basic still skills, starting like grade eight or grade nine, the earlier the better, mm -hmm. because we do recommend students to finish or, you know, get all the SAT or ACT down before the March of grade 11. Um, yeah, so I think that's going to save you a lot of time for your future activities or school homework or class or APs, whatever. So try to make your foundation solid yeah, before you're heading to go to the, you know, prepare those for those, you know, tests. Yeah, that's what we recommend. We have okay. one person raised a hand. Mm -hmm. I think it's like for some reason, like asking question. Um, okay, do you mind if you just test? Because I really don't know how to unmute you to let you talk. And uh, test is the best way. Okay, Ming? Ming? All right. So if you have more questions, and you can also uh, contact us and... Uh, yeah, so our phone number is 408-216-9109. 我们的电话是4082169109。欢迎打电话给我们或者是来去跟我们的老师来进行下一步的沟通, uh, if you have any question. Okay. All right, we're gonna wait a little bit more. And meanwhile, I wanna to continue to play the video and finish the video for you from your student. Thank you. Jinchang 
，人很大的优点，我也想像老师一样，就是他有一颗童心，而且是对什么这东西都非常非常的有热情。在新的一岁里，越来越漂亮，然后天天开心，生日快乐，永远两岁，继续女神哦！祝徐老师生日快乐，在美丽的生活天天开心，生日快乐，永远漂亮，永远年轻。女神亚亚老师生日快乐，徐亚亚生日快乐 ，Happy Birthday！ 早上柜子，祝你和老公恩爱。生活越来越美满，长得越来越漂亮。祝福你每天开心快乐，永远幸福下去。生日快乐哦！邱女神生日快乐。All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for participating. Thank you, Robin. Again, happy birthday again. It's a special day for you. <laughs> Sorry to bother you to give the golden class. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I got some、uh, question, but I will just contact them to let you contact you later. Okay. Okay. No problem. All right. Okay. Thank you、All、for、right. attending our open class, and we're gonna see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.